Okay, hello everybody. I hope you can hear me all. Um, during the last years, I have been investigating blockchain technology um, and uh, we developed uh, a special version called C-Chain. And this, uh, th this uh, blockchain version has two outstanding properties. It is very lean and it is extremely fast. Um, for that reason, um, this technology is ideally suited for integrating um, 5G technology with blockchain technology because both are reacting extremely fast. Now, um, today I'm wearing two hats, so to speak. One hat is the Technical University of Munich, and uh, the other one is uh, a new startup called Katina. Okay. Um, here you see my group at the Technical University of Munich. And this is a new startup called Catena, which was just recently formed. C-Chain is a very fast and lean blockchain. I mentioned that already. It's, I don't have enough time to go into technical details. For that reason, simply if you're interested in technical details, Simply Google C chain. There you see several hits, and then go to the web page of the Technical University of Munich, and there you see several white papers. Um, I'm interested in new markets which emerge specifically by the combination of 5G with a very fast blockchain technology. One is, for example, the whole IoT market with edge devices and microcontrollers. Another one is a digital factory where you have paper use and the smart contracts for machine to machine communication. If for example, you have a robot uh, whose uh, work is supposed to be um, paid by usage, you have a arm of a robot moving around in the in a factory and you have to react very quickly to be able to record that. Another area is heavy machinery. You may remember the Viking Sky accident about a year ago where uh, machines uh, fell out and uh, this probably has a tremendous succession of uh, judicial of, of um, uh, um, quarreling, which could be avoided if all events would have been recorded in a blockchain. Um, here are some design decisions of uh, blockchain versus C chain. Uh, we replaced proof of work large by proof of correctness, that is essential signatures. The single blockchain we replaced by many small transaction chains there is an interesting example in Germany, for example, there are about 50 million cars on the road. Maintenance chains for cars are interesting, um, but it doesn't make any sense to record all that in a single uh, in a single chain. So we would use 50 million separate chains, one for every car. There are miners. They were replaced by a certified C chain manager and the uh, dynamic consensus be replaced by a one-time static certification. The consequences of that are rather dramatic. We achieve very high performance, extremely simple infrastructure. The system runs, for example, on a Raspberry Pi or a microcontroller. It is perfectly scalable, very simple infrastructure, extremely low cost, 
and a wide range of applications, which I just tried to, um, to indicate, it can be used in real time environments and it is embeddable. Here is a graphical example. This is a edge computer. This edge computer collects data. One of our use cases is a hydro turbine or roboters um, or um, cars. And the software processes running on such a microcontroller, there is a first process that does data collection. There is a second process, a smart contract, which analyzes the data and prepares transactions, for example, for um, particular events. There is the so-called C-chain foundation, which signs and encrypts on uh, uh, transactions. And there is the C-chain uh, manager, which does the maintenance of the blockchain itself. So the bottom line of that architecture is that such a micro device produces a complete blockchain. The moment it goes outside, the blockchain is already done and then it can be um, distributed to data warehouse, to a SCADA system, ERP system and so on to many different um, usages of the blockchain itself. Uh, in, um, Okay. Now, one of the principles, some of the principles of seed chain are every agent and agents are humans, smart contracts, hardware components. Every such agent has a unique digital ID, which we call the crypt ID. Every agent must be certified. Every transaction must be digitally signed. And then every transaction is recorded in C-chain, a blockchain variant. The basic uh, interaction paradigm looks as follows. Let's say there is an agent U and there's an agent V. This agent generates a transaction, encrypts the transaction, signs the transaction and upload it, uploads it to the CDM. In this instance, the blockchain is generated. And that happens within 20 milliseconds with a absolutely final commitment. And then the generated blockchain here is synchronized immediately with the uh, sender, with the receiver, and they can replicate uh, their blockchain as often as they want to. So to put it in a nutshell, looking at the, at the um, data structure, we use precisely a blockchain data structure, but we replace the booking process by a much more efficient um, system. Now I come to some specific examples. This is uh, a demonstrator for an ultrasound distance sensor. Very simple, but interesting is we measure at 100 Hertz the distance and we easily book that uh, um, rate of transactions in a Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi and this is a, um, um, a ultrasound sensor. This is um, an example for the video of this ultrasound distance sensor. Um, this part, partial window is, uh, the, uh, shows the data recording. This window shows the uh, transactions which are sent off. This window shows the transactions as they are booked in the chain and uh, up here, you see a visualization of the actual distance. And here you see we change the distance radically. Um, okay. Now, I said that we are 
working with uh, edge nodes. Here is a particular example with uh, NXP chips down here. This is the onboard computer, uh, which is basically a Linux system. Uh, the size you see on this one cent piece. And we, but we combine that for extremely, for particularly high performance with a cryptographic processor, coprocessor. On this, in this picture, you see uh, this small uh, red circle. Oh, <laughs> um, that is a cryptographic processor, which of course boosts performance um, very much. I see, I seem to have lots of time, so I can talk a little bit slower. <laughs> um, this is the overall architecture of the C-chain system on a microcontroller. There is a server or various servers. The uh, booking process called CCM for C-chain manager is running on this server on a client up here, there is first of all the C-Chain Foundation. Now that's a rather important point because the C-Chain Foundation is a library which is imported into every application. And this C-Chain Foundation does the bulk of the work. It does everything related to encryption, uh, public and private key generation, AES encryption, signature signing transactions, uh, checking uh, the validity of other transactions and so on. Uh, okay, if the complete system, I will show uh, several potential architectures in a minute. If the complete system runs on, a, um, on an edge controller, um, both pieces are running on the same machine and therefore the uh, edge controller produces um, a complete blockchain. Now, I said we are integrating um, this technology on um, edge nodes and in combination with 5G. Here, is, here are two examples of a potential uh, architecture. The yellow part up here, that is, um, let's say, an edge node. And the processes on that, uh, this is comparable to a light node in blockchain terminology. The processes on that are a OPC UA server, which collects the data from some external sensors. There is the OPC UA client, which analyzes the data and decides what are interesting events, which must, must be booked as transactions. The C CCF, the C-Chain Foundation, this completes the transaction and sends it off to a CCM, which is one or several separate computers. Now, because of the IoT world, we are just moving everything to the Go language. And this boosts performance dramatically because in this world, in the Go, in Go uh, um, processes, you can communicate via Go channels which are extremely fast and extremely convenient to program. Um, this is one potential architecture. So if, for example, uh, you have several microcontrollers attached to robots in a digital factory, uh, you would probably have within the factory one CCM or a few CCMs running. Now, if you are in an environment where you want to produce a complete blockchain on, on the micro device, you would also include the CCM on 
the same device. This would be very interesting, for example, if you're talking about uh, autonomous driving. In autonomous driving, uh, you need to record data and events in such a way that the resulting um, blockchain should be generated on the car and should not go to some CCM, which then uh, there could be problems in between, theoretically. Um, okay, now I said we are integrating 5G and C chain. The reason is that both are comparably fast and are a perfect match. And to illustrate that, I would like to show you a specific example, namely a use case of vehicle to vehicle communication via 5G with legally binding and immutable booking in blockchain. Now, if you talk about autonomous driving, I am sure you need a technology like a blockchain in the car because you have to make absolutely sure that uh, these data cannot be tampered with. You also have to make sure that whoever sends a transaction must be authenticated. Otherwise, somebody could, for example, stop a complete autobahn by hacking the system and injecting false warnings. Okay, now let's look at the specific alerts which I am talking about. If, for example, you hit freezing ice on the road, or if you have aquaplaning, or if you have an accident and you want to send out a warning to other cars, you don't have much time. I'm talking about German autobahns um, where you would like to inform uh, vehicles, let's say in the surrounding of one kilometers. And what we can do is we can trigger um, automatic braking within other cars within 100 milliseconds. I'll go to the numbers in a second. Uh, now, whether that is legal or not, that's not my concern at the moment. Uh, there will definitely be rules, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable and so on. Um, but the technology we have allows to break another car in case of emergency in a time below 100 milliseconds. And here are the numbers. I'm talking about German autobahns where people drive around with 180 kilometers per hour. That's easy to compute. In such a case, you need 20 seconds for one kilometer or two seconds for 100 meters. Now, C-chain in combination with 5G, well, here we need 5G because of uh, communication between different cars. Before I talked about the possibility to have everything running on a single micro device, but here we need communication between cars and the latency for um, 5G is five milliseconds. This is measured time. Um, theoretically, people claim that it, uh, latency can go down to one millisecond in 5G. Um, it takes definitely less than 30 milliseconds to do the booking within a C chain server, which is, for example, sitting in a broadcasting station. Um, it takes another five milliseconds to reach the second car. And I have assumed graciously that it takes 10 milliseconds to activate the brake automatically via the CAN bus. And if you sum all that up, you're ending up with 50 milliseconds. Now I added a safety margin of one um, um, of 
And that's why I arrived at 100 milliseconds. Okay. Um, now, we don't really have 5G available yet, but we can test with the uh, Wi-Fi or wireless LAN in combination with the C-chain. And there the numbers change a little bit. Um, with uh, Wi-Fi, we have 20 milliseconds latency. And if you add it all up, you still are below 100 milliseconds. So, so the, uh, the bottom line is why do you need a blockchain for that? Such events for both driver assistance or between autonomous vehicles must be recorded in such a way that these events are legally binding and they are definitely immutable and they must be archived within the blockchain so you can check later on what really happened, what were the essential events in that. Okay, I have two more, uh, a few more minutes, so I go on to the next slide. This is a particular architecture of an, of an NXP um, uh, system. And this here is the computer. And here you see the security integrated chip. That's the uh, cryptographic coprocessor. There are various coprocessors on the market right now. Some of them work with RSA in the IoT market and micro devices. People prefer ECC because of the much lower footprint and uh, higher speed and so on. So that is uh, a particular infrastructure with which we have been working, um, but that is Presently not in production, that is a, uh, a demonstrator system. Okay. Um, I guess that was it from my side.